Welcome everybody. It's five o'clock. So that means it's time. Well, it's five o'clock my time, seven o'clock central time. That means we're on for another seminar. Welcome to the Lost Lands in World Anvil. Um, my name's Stephen Wells. I go with the, the handle of AEIOU or vowels on Discord. And I've spoken with many of you. So I'm, I'm glad to have an audience here to go and check out what we're doing. Um, here's the, the, the World Anvil site, and this is the main page. I'd like to go and point out that we've got a number of people here in the created by that I'd like to go and give shout outs to because they put a lot of hard work into this over the, over the years that we've been working on this project. Mage and um, Mr. Rocket in particular, um, they have put in countless hours making this site work. And so, we couldn't be where we're at without them. Damien Potter is not part of Frog God and has probably not done a whole lot with us, but he's done an amazing job with helping us to go and create the, um, the backgrounds and the theme and the overall feel of the site. And I feel very fortunate to have partnered with him early on. And um, we've had a great time putting together the site and making it something that we hope is useful for everybody to make their gaming more enjoyable. So with that, I'm gonna go and uh, go into a, my 10 cent tour and just work through it um, under the assumption that you're here to go and learn a little bit about it. What does the Lost Lands look like in World Anvil? And um, basically, how can you use it for your gaming and to learn more about what's going on in the world? So scrolling down, this is the main menu. And so it's got the overview, peoples, Akados, Libanos. These are the two continents of the world. These are in the Northern Hemisphere. We don't have the Southern Hemisphere mapped yet, but eventually if that should happen, then we'll be adding extra areas here so that we'll go and flesh out the entire um, world with all of the areas that are existing. We've been focusing on all the things that are gazetteer material as the, the primary focus, trying to make sure that we can get as much information in everybody's hands as possible. Um, a secondary focus has been adventures, but it's, it's, they're, they're, not, they're not the primary focus because getting all of the information where things are, allowing people to look things up, see where things are, that's super duper important. And this is a huge project and I'm glad to see that it's, you know, one of the, one of the few complete projects that are on World Anvil. As we add more material, it's, it's extra gravy to it. And we have a lot of things that we have in mind for the, for the next year, two years, three years. I mean, this is, Frog God refuses to stop publishing. And so therefore that means that uh, I have to keep adding. Let's go and take a look at some of the different things going on. In the center section, we've got the map of the Lost Lands and a brief history. And on the right-hand side is a lot of information that's useful just to go and you know help to support. Um, the Lost Land setting, you can pick up the Lost Land setting or the map. I have links to the um, licenses that were brought together or put together for um, the Kickstarter many, many years ago for the Lost Land setting. Subscriptions, each of these will go and lead you to um, more information about what the uh, subscriptions will offer and what each tier will go and provide to you. One of the things that you'll notice is that if you hover over most things, you can go and get a pop-up on the screen to go and give you the information. If you'd like to get more or to read it at a larger text, you can click on each of the different things and it'll go and lead you to a page and that way you can go and see everything in full technicolor, if you will. We have a link here to organize play to give you some information about it both on Facebook and on Discord. This is basically um, Frog God's organized play opportunity where you can go and spend some time playing Frog God material, oftentimes with Frog God employees. And um, it's a great community. I encourage people to go and check it out. It's running almost seven days a week now. And there are games upon games. I can't say more highly about it. Discord, that's probably where you found us um, with, for uh, 
Frog God Game Days. This is also where we go and gather to go and talk about all things frog. This is a, a quick link to go and get to it. We can see that right now we have 820 members online. So hoping some of them are checking this out with us. Down at the bottom here is usually a, uh, where we have the game days logo. That's where we go and put whatever the current um, offerings are. Frequently that's gonna be Kickstarters and Indiegogos. So if you're interested in keeping track of what's going on, this is a quick and easy way to do it. Otherwise, keep an eye on our emails and um, posts coming out frequently to go and let you know what's for sale, what's coming up and how you can buy more frog materials. So with that, let's go and start moving through the different areas. In the overview, we have the Lost Lands, the Skies, Time and Calendars, Technology. So each of these are sections out of the main Lost Lands book. And so we're trying to gather as much of the information together that will go and make it easier for you to go and navigate through the material and more importantly, to link the material. The Lost Lands, this is the first link on the um, overview. I've got the, the tabs open at the top there because it makes it a lot faster and we don't have load time. So this gives us an overview of the lands. This gives us a description of the two continents, as well as Lost Boros, which is far to the north, and a description of the various oceans that go and surround um, the continents. We've got a couple, a little bit of information about the bounds outside of the world. And on the far right hand side, a map of the currents and scale for the various hexes in the maps. So they're 50 mile hexes for the world. It is an absolutely enormous world. And if you'd like to have a little bit more um, reality in your gaming, um, as you go north, the hex sizes can get smaller so that they reflect the curvature of the, of the planet. Time and calendars was another one of those tabs. This gives you a little bit of information about the world and the, the months, days of the week. One of the, one, what we're looking at doing is adding in a full calendar. Um, we're not quite there yet. We're, uh, world Anvil does not support it quite yet but we're working closely with the developers to try to see how they can go and help us to go and visualize the Lost Lands calendar. Because it is, is a little bit different because of the way that it has its holidays set up. At the bottom, there are several major calendars. So you can go and look at what the, how they interact with one another, at what point were they created or um, where do they, how do they relate with one another. So the imperial record is how most time is, is referred to in frog god materials. But if you are um, in Kemet, they have a totally different calendar here. And so that's something to keep in mind. Different cultures, different calendars, different ways of approaching things. These all developed over time and it creates a very rich and nuanced world this way. Moving on to the next tab, we have the peoples and languages and religions. So we're gonna go and take a look at the, the peoples and the religions really quick. The peoples is looking at the various races and, um, and the various, and the, the cultures within them. So for the dwarven folk, for instance, you have incurrents, hill dwarves, mountain dwarves. And each of these have links off to them. Humans, on the other hand, are much more robust because it goes into many, many different cultures. Each of these have descriptions, and my apologies for the little editing items in here. Those are in there automatically for people that are um, running or building things in World Anvil. I don't believe they're available or visible on the side for the users. Um, because it makes it really difficult to read sometimes. I'm going to get to these red links here shortly. Red links are, um, they're basically links to other articles within World Anvil. And so everything is cross-linked across everything. Makes it amazing because you can go and find things that you never even knew were possible. 
religions. There's a Lost Lands religions book that's pending. Uh, I'm hoping that it's uh, kickstarted here sometime this summer and that uh, we can go and have it in World Anvil sometime by the end of the year. I can't make any promises at this time. It's going to be a lot of deities. If you've ever looked at this page and you've opened up these pull downs, so one of the things you'll see as a consistent theme throughout all of our site is that if you see a bar like this with little arrows, it's a you can open and close it. And you can open and close as many as you would like. So the deities are countless. There are so many gods within the Lost Lands. We've divided them up and, and grouped them into pantheons to make it a little bit more um, easy to follow. They have spheres of influence. And this is all, for the most part, system neutral. Um, we're trying to go and make this as, as accessible to players in all the different gaming systems that are available as possible. Um, however, where it's um, where we're looking at a specific system, it's normally going to be 5e at this point. We're looking at also incorporating both uh, Swords and Wizardry and possibly Pathfinder over time, but that's going to take a bit of time to do. When we do that, it's primarily going to be on the adventures. So let's talk about adventures. The Lost Lands have a lot of material. Frog God has been publishing for 20 years, and there are uh, it, it, so many adventures coming out every year. One of my pet projects before I started going and working on this for the frogs was um, trying to catalog everything that they had, because I was curious, where are they? And I could not find any documentation on it. So I have two different things that are going on here on World Anvil because this is kind of my, my, my pet project in a sense with that, where I wanted to go and be able to present where things are for everybody else, because if I'm curious, maybe somebody else is. So I've done it both in text and on the map, and we're going to take a look at the map here in a minute. But if you're looking for adventures, some regions have a lot, some regions have none, and some are still building up. So over time, I'm hoping that we're going to go and see a lot of adventures throughout the rest of the Kados and Libinos, and that um, authors, as they're going and working on different materials, are going to take a look at this and go, hey, you know, Southeastern Akados has quite a bit of good stuff. Is there a way I can segue off of it? Or maybe I want to take the road less traveled and go into the Green Warden Forest and Free Coast, for instance, or head off into southern, northern, eastern, and central Livinos, where there are quite a few adventures, but it's not quite as dense as the rest of the world. So this is looking at it by region. Here's another view of all of the different adventures by level. And it's amazing how many there are for first, second, and third, and fourth levels. So I've taken everything by whatever range it said in the module and grouped them together because there wasn't a really good way to go about this. This is, it's crazy how many modules there are. And they go through all the way into max levels. Let's take a look at the map now. So you can, this is the map, you can access it off of the main page. And um, by default, it's going to look like this when you come into it, where it has all of the capitals and all of the cities highlighted. If you zoom in or out, these icons stay the same size, so they start looking enormous as you go and zoom out. As you zoom in, then they go and get to the same size as what's already on the map. In the upper right hand corner, there's a little uh, hamburger menu with like four little or three little uh, squares on top of each other. This gives us a pull down that we can go and change what is shown on the map. Strongholds, roads, 
deserts, forests. Each of these are articles within the Lost Lands. You can click on any one of these or hover over it, and it's going to give you information about it. If you end up clicking on one, it'll pop up in the left hand call or left hand side, and it'll give you all of the article text. Sometimes it's a bit overwhelming there, but as you click through things, you can read through and, and basically navigate the entire world this way. If you want to close it, there's um, this little four lines that are um, right up at the, I don't know if you can see my mouse hand, um, about four fifths of the way up on the right hand side of the, the, the column there. And that can go and shrink down all of that good stuff. So let's get rid of all of these goodies and take a look at what really excited me when I saw the opportunity, what I could do. These are all of the adventures. Okay, this is most of the adventures in the Lost Lands. Um, this is what I had when I started going and pulling together my list. We've added a lot of adventures over the, the last two years um, that are not necessarily listed here. And, um, and I found a number of adventures that I didn't know existed or didn't know where they had been at. So I have been slowly but surely adding them in so that we can go hopefully at some point have every single adventure that Frog God has for the Lost Lands listed here and identified approximately where it's at. Um, when you have yourself a lot of adventures in an area like around Bard's Gate, um, they're going to be clustered in the region. It may not be exactly in that hex. I guarantee it's not exactly in that hex. And I wasn't trying to go and match the hex exactly to whatever the, the, the adventure was. I'm more interested in giving the GM a, an idea of where they can go and flow to the next adventure and how they can go and connect things together. Um, in the center of the map, right now we have Rapanathuk or Rapanathuk, depending upon who you speak to. And you can see that there are a number of adventures around it. I know that there's another one here, right above, right around the ruined fort that I don't have in here because it's a fairly recent um, publication. And that would be um, the lighthouse of Mamamamamamamam. Uh, and I can't think of what the name is right now. So there, we continue to add more adventures to the Lost Lands. Another thing that I've been working with Ken on and um, super excited about is, so we've got all these adventures. How do people go and find their way to them? So we've been adding journeys. So each one of these journeys actually opens into a, um, an entire page. Oops, hold on. Clicking on the wrong things. That gives us a lot of information about how do we go and connect different areas. In this case, how do we, how do we connect the, the, the Northlands with some of the things to the south? An easy way is just to go and follow the coastline around to the east and then south. However, one option would be to go and take a river inland, ford it, and then take a river south and thereby cut the journey down by, by many thousands of miles. Keep in mind that these are 50 mile hexes. So when we take ourselves a journey from the Northlands down towards Bard's Gate, we're talking some serious, serious distance. Do you have anything that you'd like to add about this, Ken, before I go and move on to a couple of the settlements and uh, what are your uh, thoughts? About the journeys in general? Yeah. Uh, well, Lost Lands Journeys is one of the most interesting projects that I have been able to do at uh, Frog God. I've been with Frog God for quite a while those of you remember ns1 uh i think that was my first thing published uh 2011 2010 something like that with lost lands journeys i get to go deep into the lore and the world of lost lands and add to it add those small things that aren't found in these big books covering an entire region so i can look at one small area at a time and fill in those 50 mile 
hexes uh, with information that's easy for the GM to use, that's easy for players to use if you want to come in here and use this as a hook for your character's backstory. And that lets us uh, move along I'm in narratively between one region and another. What's it like to live in the Lost Lands and go from the Northlands all the way south to, say, Eastgate? What's it going to look like? That's a travel and a journey of thousands of miles. Uh, that's what interests me the most about. That's what I enjoy the most. And every journey is unique. Every journey has its own character, its own nature to it, uh, which is one of the fun parts about it. And one of the fun parts about the Lost Lands is that you can stay within the same world and have campaign after campaign of adventures that are very different. I think. <laughs> no, that's, that's perfect. One of the things that I do want to point out is that the journeys are one of the subscription only features that we offer and um so if you're a subscriber this is this is a an offering only you have it's not published there's it's one of these days maybe we're going to go and collect all of these and put them together as a print copy but for now if you're not a lost lands in world anvil subscriber you don't have access to this material i'd like to go back to the main page really quick and point out the overview and the peoples are completely free to everybody. You don't have to be a subscriber to use it. So if you are playing in, in a Lost Lands campaign and you need to find a deity, by all means, pull up the religions and take a look at what the deities are and what they offer. Picados and Livinos, on the other hand, these are subscription. Well, that's not true. Let's take a look deeper in. Let's take a look at Eastern Nikados here. As a non-subscriber, you can see this, but you can't click on any of the links. Subscribers get access to the actual articles, but that doesn't mean that this isn't useful. This is super duper useful for people, whether they subscribe or not. And our goal is to go and make the Lost Lands as accessible as possible. I would love to go and see everybody play in the Lost Lands. And um, we just need a way to go and make sure that we can go and keep this moving forward and maintained and growing. And so we do have to have a subscription model as well. With that in mind, if you're a player in a game, you don't need to go and have a subscription to go and take a look at the maps. You can go and look at the maps, see what's going on. You're not gonna get any details, but you know, maybe that's a good thing. If the GM says, take a look at the map, you can go and get an idea of what's going on. Each of these again, well, these are not linked. One of these days I'll get the, oh, well, look at that. They are linked. So these are all linked then because they are on the map. And again, you do have all of the different options. So if you wanna take a look at all the forests, you can go and click on those links. Um, Each of these areas in the first column on the very far left, these are all going to be regions and then places within the regions. Normally, they're going to be cities, towns, and villages. Large Gate is here. This is a huge article. And you'll see that it has a bunch of pull downs as well. So the larger the, 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 the more material we have, we've taken all of the Barge Gate material that's in the, the Lost Land setting book and put it on one page. That's pretty impressive because you can open up any of these different sections then as you need to and read exactly the piece that you need. And when you're done, close it up and move on. Some of them get to be pretty long though, so be careful with that. We also have geography down the center column. So this has all of the locations within the Lost Lands, all of the different geographical features, um, all of the roads, rivers, forests, mountains. If you find something that does not have a link, like the King's Road, Scarif Point, these are things that were added that were not in the Lost Lands setting and that I haven't linked to yet. 
Um, so those were actually out of borderlands or sundered kingdoms. I've been work making an effort to go and try to pull that material that we, we published in those books into World Anvil as well, so that we basically create one location that has as much information as possible. Um, Omnin Bridge Fortress, for instance, the quote at the top is coming out of Borderlands. That wasn't in the Lost Lands setting. But it's kind of interesting. Let's add it in, add some, you know, a little bit of flavor. Why not? On the right hand side, you can see that this is a stronghold. It's Omnin Bridge Fortress. It's a government uh, of an overlord, and it's got a population of 252. It's in Aachen province. And so we can easily go and navigate between different locations. So if we wanted to go and find out, okay, I know Amrin Fortress, where do I go to, or where is it contained within? It's in Aachen, and I can make a quick trip over there. Let's see, what else do we have? Carterscroft, this is another um, city. Again, it's, it has material that was incorporated from Borderlands. Institutions was also, I believe, from Borderlands. And it has population ruler government. That's a fairly standard stat block for most of the different locations. However, what you'll find is that some actually have considerably more information. They have technology levels. They have humanoids. Um, there, it's, it just depends upon what the stat block is and what they had available to go and publish. Northlands. Ken did a little bit of work up in the Northlands. Um, he's got a book named after him so, or as the author of it. So I'm pretty proud of that and I'm sure he is too. This is my attempt to go and bring it, to give it justice and to go and try to give some flavor of it and you know, let you know what's going on. What are your thoughts on, on the Northlands there? Uh, well, uh, I wrote the book about? on the Northlands. <laughs> I mean, the thoughts is if you uh, if you want to do your Viking adventures, have a character from a very historically based Viking setting in the Northlands is the place to go. It's often seems separated from the rest of the Lost Lands just because of geography and climate, but there are links that tie it into the rest of the world as as a whole. There's no really one place in North in the Lost Lands that is gone and off on its own and separated from the rest. There's always these links. Uh, Northlands is a no, the North Sea. Uh, it's the size roughly of uh, the Mediterranean Ocean, Mediterranean Sea plus about fifty percent. Uh, it's got a Northern European style climate. It's got a culture and civilization based largely off of the Nordic sagas, especially the sagas of the Icelanders and the sagas of the Greenlanders. It's the place where uh, you get to sing your favorite Led Zeppelin song while you fight trolls and go raiding in your longship, uh, go to the province of Estenford and carve out your own hall and become a Jarl off in the wilderness. It's got a adventure path link to it, Northland Saga. It's got trolls, giants, Vikings, gods, demons, demon gods, demon called cults. Uh, it spawns off from the Northlands itself to the Kimu Islands off to the northwest, which because northeast, which because of the strange tropics and currents of the north of uh, Lost Lands is a tropical island archipelago in the north and then you've got the far north which is where you've got glaciers and mammoths and ice demons and with Northland saga what kind of adventure do you want to have as provided it's viking based so as a uh the public going and viewing this, if you find anything that uh, needs a little bit of assistance or isn't quite right, if you find typos, like despite, let me know. I'm always available on Discord. Pop into uh, the, the World of the Lost Lands section there 
We're going to pull this one off to the side. We're going to go and make a correction after this. Um, I want this to be as, as accurate and I want it to be as, as error free as possible. And hopefully we can go and start bringing in a lot of the different errata over time to go and make it so that this is a place where you can go and find accurate information. Let's go and back up over here really quick. I have one more item I'd like to talk about. So for subscribers, we also offer some of the modules in World Anvil. And these are available to any of the subscribers. They're the full text of the module. Everything's laid out in a fairly straightforward, easy way to go and access. So you can do everything from online. On the right-hand side, you can go and see the dotted lines are actually page breaks. So this material is on the first page. This is on the second, and then there's a third page for the appendices. Um, as you're more moving your way through, once again, you have the familiar pull downs, and you've got links. So in this case, this is a uh, Grimsgate, and it can link. It links back to the village of Grimsgate that's part of the Gazetteer. So if you would like to have additional information, that's the way to go and find it. Just find the links and. jump to them. So here we go and talk, we can see that it's the rise of Arambel and Grimsgate is a standard link. The creatures in this one are links as well, but they're a bold. And so if you click on Mogura Jin, this is going to go and lead you to the appendices and it'll give you full stat blocks for the creatures. We have read aloud text. Rumor tables, full maps, and oftentimes I'll have multiple maps. All of these maps I've resized so that they will fit perfectly into VTTs. So the hexes, or the, the, pardon me. So the, the squares are, um, are truly square. Everything is matched up so that everything works perfectly and it should import directly into uh, your favorite VTT. Click on a map, it'll pull it up here, and at the bottom you can click on view full size, and then you can save from here. I gotta go and make it bigger again, there we go. Scrolling down, we have descriptions for each of the locations within the, the adventure. And again, there's links off to the appendices. So we've got several of the adventures available. We'll be adding more over time. Um, these take quite a bit of effort to go and pull together. Um, we made, it, we made the, the decision not to just do a simple copy and paste. Um, I mean, if it's just a copy and paste of a PDF, quite frankly, works better. We're trying to go and use the functionality that we have available within World Anvil to go and present things in a way that is different and hopefully better in a sense, but at the same time, you know, giving people options for how they can go and access different content. So many of us like hardcovered books. That's fantastic. PDFs are convenient for those of us that don't have a lot of storage space. And World Anvil gives us a way to go and quickly move through things without having to go and um, bookmark and page our way through a PDF or, um, or page through a book. Um, for some of the adventures, it actually has a little bit more, uh, you can see what the linkages will be. On the right hand side, the tagged articles will tell you what the different places within the adventure are that it references throughout the Lost Lands. And so hopefully this makes running adventures easier and um, more enjoyable for people. So that's the Lost Lands in the World Anvil. Um, I'm open to questions and um, if Ken has more insights into, you know, writing and 
what excites him about the Lost Lands? Where does he want to write next? Where does he encourage people to go on adventure? What's interesting? Well, um, right now, uh, outside of something like the Northlands or uh, the Grand Duchy of Reem that I've, I've worked on quite a bit over the years, the parts of the Northlands that I want to go explore more is Libanos. We don't have nearly as much detail and nearly as many adventures in Libanos as we do in Akados. And I'd like to see more of that. Uh, a lot of the Lost Lands journeys uh, fans are going to see coming to the website over the next couple of months are taking us to Libanos or are wandering through different parts of Libanos. I've been trying in general every month when I write one of these up, write two Lost Lands a month, is write one in Akados and one in Libanos. So that we can have some balance there and provide some adventure material. In truth, what's drawn me to the Lost Lands from the beginning, uh, when it was first envisioned uh, by Frog God Games a decade or so ago, is the great diversity of adventure opportunities. It's not just a setting where you go, okay, this is the one theme and that's the only theme there is. There are so many options. If I want to run something that is, you know, heavy metal Vikings and long ships, I go to the Northlands, which I've talked about earlier. If I want to run more of a standard medieval fantasy, then I go to the Borderlands provinces. That's one of my favorite provinces to explore and play with. Uh, but if I want more of a Celtic fantasy, uh, there is the region around Iron Hill and the peninsula that juts out down there. Uh, with Reem, you've got more closer to a uh, high Renaissance sort of fantasy going on, more political intrigue, more opportunities for that sort of thing. But all over the Lost Lands, every region has a history, it has common languages and religion, but it changes depending on whether you're going east and west, north and south. A lot of what really to me drives the Lost Lands is that although it's not a historical pastiche, it's got real world history as the basis from which to create the adventures, from which to create the setting. It feels to me more real, more lived in than other fantasy settings you might encounter that might be a little more high fantasy. This is, tends to be more towards a realistic, not really a low fantasy, but the Lost Lands can be very gritty in places. Uh, the people there are doing things you would expect people to do. They're trying to build farms, they're trying to build houses, uh, merchant houses, merchants, uh, clans and families plot against each other. People plot for thrones. So it's a easy to grasp, easy to conceive theme for the setting, where, but also with a great diversity of landscape you can tell your stories in. As far as where do I get the ideas for my writing, my background is as a archaeologist and historian, so that's usually the first place I go because things that I can imagine are rarely any stranger than what has actually happened in history. Uh, people are an odd critter that does odd things. Looks like we've got a few questions in the Q&A. Yeah, so the first one is, how, is there a suggestion on how to deal with languages in the framework of 5e? where languages are really limited, unlike in history, where even peasants usually knew several languages. And I think that for me, the answer would be that I give free languages to players. So if you are growing up in, you know, whatever the region is, what are the regional languages? What, is the, what are the, the languages of your culture? And, and make some, you know, give some free languages to the players. I think that makes sense because it adds a lot of uh, a lot of flavor to them and some background and some of it could actually be pretty useful because if you've got yourself ruins or something else that have um, a, a regional dialect that is from someplace outside of the area, um, maybe somebody else can go and interact with it or you run into somebody and they're talking in Gasquin instead of um, 
you know, one of the other languages, or they're using finger or hand link, hand signs. How do you go and interpret that? So I think that, you know, that's how I would handle it. It's your table. Mm -hmm. Make some choices and, you know, let the players know what you're doing. One of the things I do when using 5e and playing the Lost Lands is I take out the word common. Nobody has the common tongue. I decide, okay, if we're setting it in, say, the Borderland provinces, uh, then they speak the language of Fjord, the Fjord Waith, uh, which is technically the common tongue in Lost Lands and that part of the Lost Lands. If you're going to be in uh, a different part of Libanos, you're going to, the common tongue for your campaign is whatever the local language is. That breaks away some of the, well, everyone has to have common, but what if the locals all speak a different language? Norsk in the Northlands. Then you set that as the common tongue that everybody in the campaign, all the characters speak, mm -hmm. and that gives you a base that they can build off of. Because you're right, 5e doesn't give you a whole lot of language options. Uh, you get one, maybe two from your background, maybe a language from your race usually. And then I don't think there's any classes that give you a whole lot of uh, uh, language proficiencies. So for a world traveling campaign, you're going to have to fudge it a little bit and give them extra languages or allow them to eventually pick up a language if they spend time. If they are in... Libanos and they travel to Akados, maybe they pick up the Ford Waith language after a few weeks in Eastgate trying to figure out how to find the end. We've got Let's another see. really good question. This is one that I like to avoid. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's core to what we're trying to do here. The question is, um, I'm trying to, I'm hoping for a way to be able to direct link pull material into my private campaign in World Anvil. And so essentially being able to go and use the Lost Lands material for your own campaign within World Anvil. And ultimately that's exactly what we'd love to see happen. Um, but it's challenging. We're working within a, a, an application that was developed for um, creating worlds and for single worlds and we're kind of an anomaly. We've been working closely with the World Anvil folks and, um, and trying to align with what their goals are, but at the same time, letting them know what we'd love to see. Um, ideally, it would be great if we could just go and clone, allow subscribers to clone the Lost Lands. Grab everything, put it in your world, tune it up to what you need it to be, and, um, and use it. However, it's a whole lot more challenging than that. One of the middle grounds that we've come to is that you can um, take article links and add them to your world. There are article links at the bottom of each article, I believe, probably bottom left. I don't know, let's go find out. So Carter's Croft, bottom left, copy article block. What this will do is it'll go and give you a block that you can go and then paste into your world and it will give you a link to that article. In this case, it's gonna go and link to Carter's Croft. And so you could go and add it to your, to your world. However, that's both good and bad. It's great for quickly going and fleshing out a lot of different areas and go and um, customize how, you know, what material, what information is available to your players. Um, the downside to it is that you cannot edit it. Um, it is all basically static because um, it's linking to the world of uh, the Lost Lands by Frog God Games. And so that means that if something's going to change, it's going to have to be me that makes the change. Um, so that's not necessarily ideal. We need to find another, another way to go about this. Recently, there were some there was voting for new features. And one of the features that was um, voted up to the top very, very quickly, it was the second feature that they went and said yes. The first feature was for um, people voted for the developer to go and take a vacation. Um, so, this is the, so this is truly the, the first feature that people wanted to have happen, which was um, create child sites off of the parent. 
um, their goals there were to go and create multiple time periods and use one world to go and create um, different, different eras, if you will. That's great. I think that's fantastic. It's not what we'd use it for. What I see it as is a stepping stone towards creating child worlds for players to be able to do something similar, creating a, their own shard off of the main, if you will. I don't know how that will look. It may very well need to be a, a higher tier subscriber item. Um, and we'll, because we'll need to go and see what the resources are, we'll need to see how they implement it, and we'll need to see what the impact is for us. Um, and it may not come to be any, any use to us at all, but it's a step in the right direction. What I love about World Anvil is that it's constantly being developed. They're very open about the development and they're very um, active in trying to go and develop the things that their community wants for the game or for the, for the, the world settings and for their product. So I see it as something in the future I don't see when it's going to happen in the future. Um, in the meantime, I'm happy to go and work with people to go and make this work as best we can. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you do copy the block, put it in your world and um, stop subscribing, that link will stop working. And I think that's very important because I, it, it needs to go on. We need to have that connectivity. And I know that that's one of the primary reasons that they're, they're they're hesitant about it within World Anvil is that um, they're very concerned about copyright and um, people just stealing content. And that's a concern, but it's not a driving concern. It's, it's something that we do need to go and keep in mind. Um, but at the same time, we do want people to use the Lost Lands to its fullest. So we need to go and walk that line with them and find out what's going to work. I'm looking at uh, Esco's question here, which seems to be along the same lines. Yeah. Uh, they ask for article linking for copying article block at a blank field that will allow a GM to make notation of what is different from the main. Would this be technically feasible without too much work? And I understand where he's coming from here because mm -hmm. you were showing Grimsgate earlier. And at my own table, we ran through Grimsgate about a year ago and the PCs made some major changes to the town uh as well as uh ended up leaving a large portion of their loot in this small town that they had taken control of and then died and never made it back so for our home we uh lost lands that changes the nature of Grimsgate, unless we just wave a hand and reset it no totally and so something that i want to go and see happen i'd love that if we could go and have the article blocks if the comment section was specific to the world it's the article block was added to. That would be amazing, but I don't know that it works that way. Um, but right now there's not any way to go and add things into the actual article to go and show that it's changed. The only way to do that is to go and not link it, but rather create your own using the verbiage from the Frog God site. Now the downside of that is that if you are not a paying customer for World Anvil, you may not have access to all the functionality and it may not look the same way that it does on our site because I've done some pretty extensive CSS modification to create a site that's actually very unique and fits the frog god feel and um, gives us that fantasy um, background but also nobody else has. There are, there's no other site on World Anvil that looks like ours, and that's on purpose. Um, we, we keep some of the functionality, but at the same time, we're not locked into that functionality. Were there any plans of correcting the location of the Citadel of the Raven on the map? It currently doesn't match the text. Ah, the maps. The short answer is, if I get a new map, um, because the map that we have is the official map for the Lost Lands, it is the one that we are working with to, I'm trying to find my way to it. 
Top left corner, by the way, gives us a pull down that we can get back to any of the different areas. I failed to point that out. It's this little three dots, three lines in the top left-hand corner of the screen. It's accessible from any of the different um, pages. So this map is the map that the, lost of the, the world of the lost lands uses. I'm hoping that it continues to go and get updated over time and that we continue to get updates to it where it'll go and have the, the various changes. If there are things that can get added to it, I am adding them. If there are things that need to get changed, like locations, as you're noting, um, those are probably not going to change. Some of it is readability. There's not a lot of space there to put stuff. So is this going to be pixel perfect down to the last inch to go and say, this is where this location is? Probably not. If you want to have that, my recommendation is say, okay, this is the this is the world. It's a pretty good view of it from a dragon's eye view. But if I want to actually see what the map looks like for that act for the Stoneheart Valley, I'm going to pull up the product and I'm going to look at the map from the product. That's going to be the one that's accurate for that location. Um, this is going to go and give you some good ideas of where things are, but it's it may not be a hundred percent accurate for everything that's on the map. Some things that we've added that are not on the map necessarily are, hey, there's a dot. It doesn't have anything. There's not a word, there's not a name around it. There's a couple of things over here that also don't have locations like Tanner's Green up here written on the map. It's because they're, they are on the the ream map i've added them to it and i want people to know that okay yeah you can go and get to fenria and it is right here so this map does have additional content that's not on the main map and it'll continue going and getting more and more content added to it but making changes to the stuff that's actually on the map is more challenging um, because otherwise I'm going to have to just basically take some white out to it and that'll look pretty silly. Let's see, where are we? Will there be a way to filter between Swords and Wizardry, 5e, and Pathfinder? Yes, there will be. Um, just recently, World Anvil added in the functionality for us to do um, radio button selections. So you can say, hey, excuse me. I'm a Swords and Wizardry player, and I'd like to see only Swords and Wizardry content. Um, I don't think it's on these. But if we look at Rogues and Rimbalo in my code, right above the map or above the, the um, the adventure cover is actually a little section that says what version of the game you want to play. And so that is something that is already coded in. I just need to go and have the other material added in and um, everything will be good to go. The challenge there is that basically each, each different system needs to have all of these different sections Co basically written for that one game. <coughs> that way, it'll only show you the version of that for the, for the system that you're interested in. Any other good questions? We have exactly six minutes left to this talk before we have to run off and do other things with other people and check on games and make sure everything's running smoothly. I hope this has been useful for folks. I always love giving a tour of the Lost Lands. Um, many of you have received it. It's not that different for each of you, um, but it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of time and effort that's gone into it. And um, I've been really excited about this project. Are new adventures going to be written in a manner where the adventure is system neutral and only stat blocks, etc., are system specific? That one I can't answer. answer that one. 
I have no idea. I mean, if I rule the world, and I certainly do not, what I'd love to see is every adventure to have uh, a section or, you know, if it talks about a village, give us the stat block information that's going to go for a gazetteer entry, and then we can import that directly into World Anvil. That would be awesome. If we uh, could have I other things that are, you know, making it system neutral, that might be the direction that needs to happen because I see, you know, more system neutrals happening from Fog God. And if that's important to you, by all means, go to the Discord, bring it up, mention it at the Frog Chat. Say, hey, I'd love to see more system neutral with stat blocks for system specific stuff separate. Make your voice heard. And Asko, as far as uh, system neutral and only stat blocks covering a specific for a specific system. Part of the difficulty there is uh, Swords and Wizardry versus 5e versus Pathfinder often has a very different set of assumptions with the system as far as how the adventure needs to flow. And not just, well, this monster has an AC 15, well, in this system it should have an AC 22. It's a case of, in some situations, do I use this monster at all? Do I set up the pacing so that there's more or less encounters? So it's generally not a case with an adventure of you can just hack and change. It needs to have a little more subtle adaptation rather than conversion. Last and, question of the day here. Yes. It's uh, talking John, about the hex distance between villages and cities. That's what I'm doing with journeys. I'm filling in those 50 mile hexes. You can always assume that there is a settlement or yep. two or three or a dozen in between locations on the 50 mile map. These are 50 mile hexes. So there are probably, you know, there could be a dozen settlements within that 50 mile area without any trouble. Villages are small. Towns need to have support. Mm -hmm. Cities need to have villages to go and provide all that, you know, all the grain and chickens and everything else because they're not farming inside the city. So but yes, by all means, please do flesh out the world, make it your own. Um, there, that's the beauty of the Lost Lands for me is that it gives you a, a very good framework to build upon and to go and create your own world within. Um, and you know it's that Bill chicken. uses 10 mile hexes in his games. Um, it, that works too. I mean, you can go and take it literally as, you know, this is what it is. These are the villages and towns, and that's all there is. Honestly, he doesn't, it, he, he adds stuff all over the place as well. So there, as you're playing along, he may very well have it sketched out in his mind, but um, going up the coast from, um, oh, goodness, I've lost my, where I'm at in the uh, lost land. Eastgate to... Geez, I don't know. In home. Yeah. So if you go from Eastgate North, um, you're going to run into a whole bunch of different places. I'm in an area right now in this in his world where it's where we found a village that was in the middle of nowhere. It was not on the map. We had no idea what would, what was going on, um, and it's a very successful village, and it's going to be on the map now because we're putting it on the map. But it's on our map. And you need to do the same for your games. Add, add more stuff. Add ruins. Add, add history. And keep in mind that we're continuing to write new adventures that are going to be set in the Lost Lands. And with the 50-mile hexes, we have room to put them in. And if yeah. you need a village for the adventure and there isn't one on the map, well, we Frog God writers will add one to the map. There's no reason you can't either. Yep. The other nice thing about the 50 mile hexes is that let's say Ken does write an adventure in your favorite hex. Um, it's a big place. There's a very good chance that his adventure can be going on in the same thing that you've been adventuring in for, you know, three or four months and that they can go and they may not be a hundred percent identical. They probably won't be, but they can be, you know, compatible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd say take advantage of the, of the world. Make it your own, flesh it out, add cities, add towns. And I would love if you went and posted those on Discord so that other people could go and take advantage of it too.
any other things? Let's see. Check, 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 check. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Kenneth Ventures. And we're done. Thank you, everyone.